Good morning. Mr Chairman, I'm humbled to be invited to present alongside such illustrious company. Uh, my brief is diversified pastures at the front line of climate change in Northland. Sorry, bear with me. Yeah, cool, thank you. Um, diversified pastures at the front line of climate change in Northland because Northland is expected to experience the more extreme effects of climate change in New Zealand. We should therefore be prepared to pioneer actions for change. The frequency and intensity of adverse events are predicted to increase. It is untenable to advocate a climate change emergency without developing mitigation and adapt adaptation solutions for agriculture. We knew ryegrass was not persisting. Our experience with perennial ryegrass is that of repeating the same actions with the expectation of a different outcome. That in turn has been reinforced by marketing and the forage value index. The resultant feeling is that of a breach of trust. We then question science. I'd ask why a brand would be prepared to risk reputational harm. We're actually advocating profitable homegrown feed solutions. So this slide, I don't know, can I have a, put your hands up if you've seen this slide before. Yeah, not many. This slide is about behavioral change. It, slide, it provides the context to our experience in Northland. Soil moisture and temperature stresses are already in play. Only one further compounding stress, such as insect attack, poor soil fertility, grazing management, is required to adversely affect a substantial part of the Upper North Island. This slide says we're obliged to take action. So diversified pastures, manipulating the traits of multiple species to enhance dry matter yield, persistence, quality, and to exploit seasonality. Three key pillars of pasture productivity from Chapman in 2015. So we focused on two main themes, resilient perennial species that can better withstand challenging climate conditions and to exploit species that can execute a growth advantage when conditions are consistently more favorable for growth. So to do that, we undertook a series of mow and plot trials and paddock demonstrations um, across Northland between 2016 and 2020. So we took this opportunity to assess whether we would observe a difference in persistence between three grass species. If a sward were to be no more productive but could persist longer, this would reduce the burden of regrassing and losses that go with it and we'd take that as a win. We did not anticipate a yield advantage of the magnitude that was recorded. We measured a two to three tonne yield advantage to Coxfoot over ryegrass. By year three, the percentage of ryegrass at both sites was less than 25% of botanical composition. Coxfoot, however, remained above 90%, tall fescue above 80%. So if we apply the forage value index, seasonal economic values derives a $400 a hectare per year advantage to Coxfoot relative to ryegrass. The implications are that we're migrating from including Coxfoot in a seed mix at three to five kilos in a mixed sward toward 10 to 16 kilos per hectare in a pure sward, reflecting the Australian experience. You must note that white clover failed to make any meaningful contribution. So we sought to investigate whether pursuing the addition of annual clovers was complementary to the annual transition of Kaikuyu to ryegrass. For those that aren't aware, the last six weeks most of us have spent mulching down to the boards um, the Kaikuyu on our farm. So in the beginning of autumn, late autumn, early winter, our feed covers are actually artificially low. Okay, so we have determined that the annual clovers can successfully influence the timing of growth they bring the feed forward. But it may or may not influence total yield depending on summer rainfall and the influence of red clover. But equally, 
there was no disadvantage in a dry summer. The Lancer is more suited to crop rotation or hay and silage. The seam and Persian are more ad adapted to rotational grazing. A significant quantity of that growth is reproductive in late spring. This has value as quality silage, but is discounted by the seasonal economic values of the forage value index. The value of silage and other home-grown supplement in an FEI-constrained environment is now that of the next available protein source. From our experience, the addition of three kilos of Persian clover can reasonably expect an additional 1,500 kilos of dry matter in a new pasture. A high level of trash associated with mulch kaikuya generally creates a hostile environment to the clover seedling. So with herbs, we recorded a three tonne advantage, yield advantage, to adding herbs to a mixed sward of tall fescue perennial ryegrass foxfoot, red and white clovers, under high fertility. This has clear implications for the use in effluent areas. Using a Dairy NZ guide of $300 of operating profit per tonne of feed eaten at 80% utilisation predicts an annual advantage of $700 a hectare to including herbs. On free draining soils under moderate to high fertility and with the use of selective herbicide, chicory can become a two or three year option that is insect tolerant. Plantain can perform a similar role, is tolerant of a wider range of soil types and seeds prolifically. Annual clovers can be successfully incorporated into a herb pasture. The question for us in Northland, can this yield advantage be transferred to Kaikuyu management? So in summary, the failure of perennial ryegrass was within three years. The persistence and yield advantage to Coxwood was over three tonnes. We had poor persistence of white clover. Red clovers were highly productive in a wet summer. Annual clovers can successfully affect composition but has a variable, effect, a variable effect on total yield. We had a yield advantage of herbs of two and a half to, well, five tonne per hectare. We have identified for further investigation the integration of small seeds species into Kaikuyu management. So our conclusions. There's no such thing as a permanent pasture solution in Northland. Temperature and soil moisture stresses are already in play. Homegrown feed is a key component of farm profit, Neil 2018. Profit is a key aspect of farm resilience, and resilience is our health and well-being. We have a, a yield advantage of two and a half to three tonnes is significant. Diversity is healthy and profitable, but will require tailored management. Northland needs a legume solution. Our results would support further development of the, of the Dairy NZ Forage Value Index to include regionalised values and multiple species. This is crucial to give farmers confidence in the potential value of more resilient pastures. Climate change impacts will require adaptation and mitigation. By way of latitude, Northland is expected to experience the pointy end. We will develop the solutions that in turn will migrate south. For Northland in particular, there is a case to be made we should be exploring a wider range of forages, refreshing previous science to account for new improved cultivars, and look to climates that are predicted to become our new normal. We saw that yesterday from Yarni. Thank you to those who have invested in our vision, and may the seeds that we have sown grow and make us stronger. By necessity, and with your support, Northland is willing to lead, ready and able to search for solutions. I invite you to participate and support us. Our evidence was clear. Ryegrass failed within three years. For many, it's less than two. Under the same conditions, white clover failed to persist. We know Kaikuya is prone to frost. Tall fescue and coxfoot may provide us with medium-term solution, but we need to think now and act about securing access to appropriate gene pool to provide for longer-term solutions. Thank you.